Okay, welcome. Come on in, sit down. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome to all of our students that are in the class. Welcome to, we have some MBA students with us tonight. Welcome. We're glad you're with us. And welcome any guests that are here. You're always welcome. These lectures are open and available to the public. So this is our third lecture. We have Emily Peterson with us, and we'll introduce her in just a moment. But we're very excited that she was willing to come and tell an amazing story. Uh, the first night that I spoke here, we talked about some keys to entrepreneurial success. Do any of you remember that? So we had a list of things that entrepreneurs all tend to do. And the more you do those, the more likely you are to be successful. And I think the first two lectures we've had have been great examples of that list. So Dave and Liz Findlay, who unfortunately couldn't drive the Logan, but I think they are a great example of finding a real strong, engaging purpose. Uh, doing something you really, really believe in, that you're driven for, that you just, you have to do it. So those of you that were here, what, what would you say that strong driving purpose is for all being fit? And please don't all speak at once, okay? Anyone brave enough? What was their purpose? They're down in Guatemala. They're struggling. Why did they keep, keep going? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, they were just sick about the layoffs that were happening in the industry, and they were committed to keep all those people employed. That's why they kept going for so long. Okay, the next lecture, Crispy Cone, I think they were a great example of uh, working with a, a real a zealous tenacity. They're the most tenacious people that I think I've talked to recently about saying we're going to be on Shark Tank a year before uh, they even tried to be on Shark Tank and they didn't give up and they were persistent and so you need a strong engaging purpose, a reason to drive you to get you over the hard times and then you need to work really really hard and uh, I've never met an entrepreneur that was highly successful that didn't have a strong work ethic that didn't, and that drives, that comes from the love. That drive comes from the love that you have for what you're doing. So we have another great story tonight. I'm thrilled that Emily has agreed to come speak with us. She has an amazing company, and we're going to let Alex introduce her, and then she'll, she'll come on up and talk. All right, thank you again for everyone um, for being here. Um, Emily Peterson is the CEO and co-founder of Serenoni Blankets. Um, Emily and her husband, Nathan, started Serenoni um, to make money to allow her daughter to have surgery to cor correct the microtia, a congenital condition that caused her to be born without a fully developed outer ear. Emily and Nathan worked on their business as they were raising three small children, as they created gift baskets that included mostly shoes, jewelry, then soon they realized that people love the baby blankets most. As their company grew, they knew they wanted to give back to less fortunate families throughout the world. Through their social give back initiatives, Serenoni Cares, they've been they've blessed many families in West Africa, Syria, and Cambodia. In 2022, Nathan tragically passed away from stage four glio glio glioblastoma multiform. Through this difficult time, Emily and her family have continued to grow the legacy of Serenoni. Emily echoes Nathan's passion for service and connection as, and is dedicated to growing Serenoni. Her mission is to bring comfort, warmth, and connection to individuals and families. Um, give it off for Emily. Okay, thanks everyone. Well, thank you so much. I guess the problem about not sending in your own bio is that they basically just kind of told my whole story and my whole talk tonight. But if you saw my um, picture and my bio, you'll probably recognize it was a picture of 10 years ago. I didn't actually, I get, send in a picture. And so then when I saw that, I'm like, oh, perfect. That was a 10 year old picture. I look a lot younger there. And, but I'm grateful to be here today and um, appreciate all of you coming. I was born, born with microtia. Microtia is when your middle and your outer ear does not fully develop. And so I had a left ear that was smaller than my right ear, and I had no hearing in my left ear. I had a couple surgeries as I was a young girl to help that ear look more like normal, more like the other ear, but grew up without having any hearing in that ear. 
I was told, and you'll see as you look online, that microsia is not hereditary. So when our first daughter was born, our first child, our beautiful Eliza, you know what, we probably better get to the, um, was born without an ear. You can imagine our surprise. And um, that is the beginning of Serenoni. Basically, as time went on, um, we wanted to be able to look at the options of having surgery for our daughter to create an outer ear for her. And um, at that time, when we went to go meet with the doctors down in California, we had three children by this time because you had to be a little older before they could create this ear for you. But we learned at that time that it was considered cosmetic. So it would be similar to a boob job where um, insurance would not cover that. And so we were quite surprised when we were told that the outer ear first surgery would cost us $100,000. We were a small family, three young kids. At that time back then, they didn't have the GoFundMes and all these platforms to be able to raise money. And so we were stuck and we were at a loss. And I thought to myself, I came from a family. My dad had, had his own business. My grandpa had his own business. And I was determined that was how I was going to be able to help our situation, to be able to come and earn that $100,000 for the outer surgery. That didn't include any middle ear or hearing the um, surgeries that would come after that. So my will started turning, and um, I was given gift baskets by my husband's companies, and I knew that they sent, spent lots of money on those gift baskets. But every time I felt like when I got the product, um, I used it once, and it just was cheap stuff. It wasn't stuff that I loved, and so I didn't end up using that. And so I was determined that I would be able to find um, products and source products and create gift baskets that would be high quality stuff that moms would love. I had three kids and I was in like the thick of motherhood and I knew all the trendy stuff and I knew all the cute stuff and I knew the stuff that moms would want. And so that began um, our, our journey, my journey to start a gift basket company. Um, we determined early on that, we, the, that our purpose, that we'd have a few purposes, that that number one priority was that we would provide money for Eliza's surgery. And then we had these big dreams that we would be able to help people in different countries who didn't have the means to support themselves, be able to rise out of poverty by creating products, that we would provide this outlet for them to give us products so that we would be able to... Um, sell their products, but then it helps rise them out of poverty. And the last one is, we hope that eventually, if possible, we would be able to um, use this business to provide for our family. And so my night job began, basically. I would, um, after the kids and my husband went to bed, I would get up and I would start on the computer and I would start looking around and determining what I could um, source. I went to Alibaba, and it's nothing like today. You can figure out how to run a business today. There's all sorts of classes and courses, but not ba way back then. But I was able to, soon we were sourcing knit outfits and blessing, smocked blessing outfits from Peru, je um, jewelry from India, and I wanted to add a luxury blanket to that gift basket. Um, and so I um, looked around, and I found some luxury blankets but the one I wanted was an $85 for a baby blanket. And so that began the blanket making journey. So these were some of the items. I had one client, Anderson. He was, used to be part of the big five accounting firms. That's, that was my only one, um, my only client. But I had, sourced, um, lot, I had sourced several products and I bought a lot of products wholesale. And so um, I was just trying my hardest to be able to to run this business and do the best that we had, we could, but we had never, we hadn't run a consumer company before. My husband was in um, tech. I was in, came from a finance background. Well, I shouldn't claim that I came from a finance. I was in the finance services industry. 
um, running business um, there. And so we didn't know how to sell consumer products online. Um, so Facebook and Instagram weren't a thing back then. And Etsy was, but we didn't fit the Etsy mold. And so um, we were struggling. We didn't know what to do. I started going to like craft fairs. I'd haul all the kids down. We'd have this trailer. I would set up craft fairs and I'd come out of it and I'd be like, oh, I have $150 in sales. Oh, $300 in sales. Well, that, was that really worth all that time to go down to Salt Lake and, and do that? And so um, we had also determined that our number one priority was raising our kids and that was my number one priority. And so it was a lot of late nights um, for us there. Um, Nathan used to say that I liked, um, I was running the business for fun. And basically what he meant is after um, that I really liked spending money. I was outfitting my kids. I had really cute shoes. I had cute outfits. Um, but after four years of being in business, Nathan was trying to, he's just, if Nathan, if you knew him, he was the kindest man. He is the kindest man. And, um, and he, I think, was just trying to be nice to me and just let me run my little business. But after four years, I think he probably had had it a little bit. But in his kind way, he pulled up a, um, a P&L for me and showed me that after four years of business, we had lost money. And I was like, no way. There's no way. Like, I am working my tail off. There is no way we could have lost money. But certainly, um, we had lost money. And so at that point, we had to determine we had something we had to say, why? Why did we start this business? Is this worth it? You know, understand and remember why you were doing so. So that has been a buzzword lately. Know your why, right? This is way before that. We had to come back to that and say, like, what are we going to do here? Four years in business and we haven't made money. And I, you know, I guess I was running a business for fun, I guess, out of my basement. Um, it's... Your why has to be something that just drives you, something that means something, something. It can't just be number of followers. It can't be, I want to make money. That's not deep enough. And so we were able to go back to why we needed to provide the surgery for our daughter. And so we were able to kind of take, you know, inventory that night, and we had to make changes based on what he was showing me. And so we dropped every single product except for blankets. Blankets were most profitable at that time, and we were selling the most of them. So we t made our first large pivot four years into business, obviously not making any money. And um, we went and we changed to be blankets only. Um, that's something I think all these lessons I hope is I give these points that we can kind of think like this is, just doesn't apply to business. A lot of you will, are in business. A lot of you might go into business but might, might leave business. This is, I want you to, each of these lessons as we kind of go through it, take it down to a personal level. Why do I do what I do? What means the most to me? You know, what drives me? Um, but this is how, what we turned to. We, we ended up being just a blanket business. I started to um, sell. I didn't know how. I couldn't crack the whole D to C, selling to, to direct to the consumer. Um, I didn't know how to do it. So I started selling. I'm like, okay, marketing strategy here. I'm going to start selling to these discount sites. Steels.com, Jane.com, Zulily, which is interesting. These two companies in the last month, both bankrupt, both out of business. So Jane.com, there's no Jane.com, no, no Zulily anymore. But... They ran for a lot of years until just last month. But, so we discounted. So we, by this time, we have five children, okay? We can see here, there's our little family at this point. And I am just trying to figure out how to, to sell our products. And we started selling on these discount sites because people could buy it at half off, right? And people started loving our products. And so we were selling. We were making money. Um, but we're a couple years into kind of doing this model. And I am like... 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm the only employee. I'm talking to all the suppliers, you know, doing all the emails, trying to get the products made. I'm doing all the marketing. I'm fulfilling all the orders. Nathan still has his full-time job. He's serving in church callings. 
he's tapped out. He's going to Duke to get his MBA, right? And, and, and so he's gone for like two weeks at a time going to get that MBA, and I'm trying to manage all this, and I like, I was done. One night laying in bed, and I just said to him, I'm like, okay, hon, like, we're shutting Serenoni down. And he's like, whoa, 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 what? I'm like, nope, we're done. Our kids are number one. We determined that at the beginning, and I am like spent. I can't do this anymore. Um, but we decided to uh, take, I'll get a little personal here, but we um, decided to go to a higher source and ask, you know, is it time for Serenoni to be done? And uh, it wasn't. And I wasn't very happy with that decision. I just wanted to be a mom. I wanted to be a mom of five kids, you know, and I wanted to be able to put all my energy into that. But someone knew something that would be coming in our way later on, and I'm so grateful that I just had to push through and say, no, this is, this, we're supposed to be here to make a difference, not just for our daughter, but there's other purposes. And so we continued um, down the path. Um, at this point, we knew we had to make sort of, some sort of change. And so, because I couldn't do it, I could not keep going. Um, and we couldn't crack. We didn't know how to sell direct to the, on the, our website. It wasn't working. It wasn't enough to sustain the business. So we decided to make a pivot at this point. And when things are working, aren't working out, when you're facing challenges, taking a look at things and saying, like, what do we need to do? What do we need to change to make things happen? And so we decided to go into the wholesale market. And you know what we did? We just signed up for the, we went and, and uh, walked through the show, the largest baby show um, expo, and we decided that we were going to go to the, to the ABC expo. This booth doesn't show it. It's a 20 by 20. Um, but we took the largest booth that there was, and we pretended we were like this large company. We were making, the, um, you know, blankets, but we pretended that we were bigger than we actually were. And you know what happened? We signed down 50 retailers, 50 stores that first time. So, thanks. Well, thank you. I don't think, I don't know, $50,000 worth of orders, but you probably shouldn't clap because... We, had, we hadn't, we were new at this, and there was this Canadian retailer that ordered $18,000 worth of product, and guess what? We were like stoked. We were like, are you serious? And so we sent the product to them, and guess what? They hadn't paid us, and guess what? They went bankrupt, and so we really didn't have $50,000 in sales. We had $50,000 minus the eighteen. Nonetheless, that came, that's how Serenona, we started to build this whole wholesale market and, and start working with the stores. Um, so lesson two, as you face challenges in life and you, just as you look at life, I, I've done this just barely just recently in my own personal life. Be willing to shift and to change, even if it looks differently. We didn't want to be in the wholesale. We wanted to go over and sell direct to the consumer. But change, in, if we, you, um, change even if it looks different than you originally thought. And certainly, when you come against challenges. So that's where I like. We're 13 years into business, guys. I mean, it's not, you know, you look at Serenoni and you might think a little, you might think things are different, that we just started and we were successful right away. Um, but this is where I like to say Serenoni started. So I'm kind of, not that I'm embarrassed, but like, we started running it like a real business at this point. So this is when we started um, Serenoni. And um, I, I'm just going to briefly go through. I need to look at time. Oh, wow. Okay, we got to hurry. We go through a little bit here. Um, and I'll just share a little bit about Serenoni. So I'm going to take you up to speed to where we are today. We started with our signature Lush fabric. Um, we knit all of our own fabric. We have manufacturers, and they're our dear friends. Our kids FaceTime with them. Um, our family loves them. And we have been able to grow Serenoni. So we have multi-fabric, um, different types of fabric. These are some of our fabrics. Um, we have over 15 different types of fabrics that we make blankets. We started out as a baby blanket company. We uh, moved into toddler blankets, throws, and XL throws. 
Here are some of our bibs, sleep sacks, some of our baby bee products. Then we went to king and queen bedding, pillows. Um, and you can see here, this is a little bit of Serenoni. Um, outdoor blankets, snuggler. Does anyone have one of these up here? I want to I wanna say, does anyone? Okay, yay, yay. I see down there, up there. Who, who, who's raising their hand back there? Back and back. Okay. Thank you. I'm glad you got a snuggler there. We're going to get you a blanket a little later on. So here, robes, pet blankets. This is, we've been able to grow. Um, after that year at Wholesale, we've been able to grow every single year. 2020, 19 to 2020 to 2021 were some of our best years as we hit COVID. We faced challenges, no question. Has it been easy? No. Am I grateful that I've been able to run and grow a business over these last eight years of when I say Serenoni really started with my best friend and my husband. Yes, it was, it's been awesome. It's been hard. It's been challenging. Um, but we've been able to do it, and we've been able to do it together. And we've been able to do it because of people like you and customers like you that have been able to help support us over the year. So now we are a, not just a um, baby blanket company, but we, um, our goal is to be able to provide comfort and warmth for the whole entire family, from baby all the way to adult. Our purpose has changed. Our daughter, Eliza, actually, when it came time to surgery, for surgery, just said that she didn't want surgery. But she does have a prosthesis, and, this, and Serenoni has also been able to help out with a jaw surgery that had to happen because her, her, that side of her face um, and jaw didn't grow, but the other side did. So she is currently serving a mission in Mexico City, and um, I wish I would have been able to show a picture. I think I, hopefully I have one, maybe I have just old ones later on, I'll have to tell you. But um, So Serenoni's purpose has had to shift a little bit, but... It was born out of love, love for a daughter, and a, and a hope to comfort and help her, and that purpose has remained the same. Our hope and our goal is to be able to provide comfort and warmth, and we love being able to share our blankets with everyone, especially those who are going through challenging times. Um, but as I look at all those years of growth um, where we've been able to grow, we, we have an Amazon brand, we sell on Amazon, we have D2C, which is our largest um, channel out of all of our channels, Amazon second, we have wholesale, we have corporate gifting, and we have events. Has anybody been to a warehouse sale, a Serenoni warehouse sale? Okay, good. Was it crowded? Was it busy? Did you wait in line? We're so grateful for each of you. Um, and uh, as, we, as we look at, um, as I kind of took a a step and I looked and I thought, you know, all those years of growth, you know, there were times that I was there at the office at two and three in the morning, filling, not, not I'm, I'm, I'm talking regular area, era, trying to just fill those, those Black Friday orders. Um, Nathan and I worked um, together through on, on Serenoni, but one of the things as I looked at what was most powerful, what has been most impactful as I look back now, on Serenoni, what has been most impactful? And I would say that we kind of did things a little differently. Um, a lot of times businesses will just take their business and say, like, what's our purpose? You know, what, it, what do I, um, you know, what do we want to do? You know, what are our, our goals? What are our values? And we kind of did things a little different. We actually um, set our own personal priorities as a couple and as a family first so we said what is most important to us what needs to be our number one priority in our personal lives and as a family and then we based the company on that we infused those personal values those personal priorities and made them Serenoni's priorities and I believe as I look back, I, that has been the most impactful decision that, um, we, that we made. 
Why, you may ask, and hopefully the rest of this, um, let's look at the time here, I keep, um, hopefully we can, I can share and you can come to understand a little bit more about why that um, has made um, such an impact on, um, on the company and on us as, as individuals. Um, first, I'm going to get, um, I'm going to give you a, I'm going to just share some of the things that, um, they're not all the personal um, priorities, but I'm going to share some of our personal priorities and then as a family and then how they've influenced um, the business. So we um, listen and care individually. I'm not going to go into it for the family, but I, this has influenced Sarah Noni. Um, our customers became our, our children, in, in essence, during the business time. And our, we valued our customers, all the comments. It was our customers that, that made us change from a baby company to a blanket company. It was our customers saying, like, when are you going to make these my size? My baby loves this. I love this fabric. When are you going to make it up my size? Well, then the next thing we were hearing is, my husband steals my blanket every night when I'm in bed. And so Nathan was, like, determined. He was so excited. He was like, we have to have a king queen. I put him off for, like, a year or two, I think, Nathan, um, before we actually did it. So we came up with a new proprietary fabric, and grand, our grand fabric, and we made king and queen blankets. We were on Kickstarter, and we met our goal within the first hour and pledged 107000 for our project. So that was, that, was a fun, that was a fun little time to be able to introduce that. But you know what? It was our customers. It came from our customers. We valued our customers, and they became our own little community. And so um, that's one of the ways, the small ways. I'm just going to share a few of the ways that our values and our principles that we outlined um, has made a difference on our company. Relationships matter. Um, our manufacturers are our family. And you can see this is... Um, you can see in several of them. Oh, I don't think we got, I'm sorry, somehow we don't have the right, I duplicated pictures. I, but um, we've got my little daughter here. But our manufacturers are our family. And that has helped us when it came to COVID time. And we had this surge when they couldn't manufacture what we needed to be, have manufactured. They did everything they could because we were family. And so our relationships with our manufacturers carried us through hard times of growth, but also times when we haven't grown. When, we, when after we had an excess of inventory after COVID, our manufacturers still stuck with us because of how we treated that relationship. Um, okay, don't compare. Be and love us. I hope you'll take this and, and think of this as you go later on in life. You know, that's um, something that in the, today's world is so hard. But as a family, we're, we wanted to be us. We don't want to compare ourselves to other people. We want to do what was most important to us, live by our own values, and not compare and try to be like other people and, and look at other people and aspire to be like it, others. That lesson has been a tough one in business. It's easier, I think, as a family, for me it has been, than it has um, in business. Why? Because we live in this world where social media is right before us, right? And we're constantly, so I'm here, I am trying to grow Instagram, and I, my kids will tell you, I don't know how to, I mean, like Instagram, Facebook, I do not like it. I'm not, I'm not a fan, but I knew I had to do it for a business, right? I don't even know how to work Facebook. I'm just lucky I can answer the call when the missionaries call on Monday. So that's the only thing I, I'm good at for Facebook. Um, but it was such a challenging time because I would I look at these companies and I would be like, are you kidding me? She started after me and, her so, and she's grown and she's bigger than me. And it, I, you just start comparing yourselves. You know, and you kind of try to see and you say, what in the world? Why, why is she bigger and what is she doing differently? And you can just sink yourself into this hole. I mean, it's the same thing we do personally as we look 
at people on the outside, right? And as we get involved in social media, you find yourself and you just think, all of a sudden, you're not as great as you think you are, right? Because you are being sucked into, of like, I'm comparing to someone else. So if I could say anything, you know, not, I mean, if I could, you know, share that, it's just been a challenge. It's been a challenge watching other companies come in after us and change their whole entire company to, to look like Serenoni, to copy colors, to copy fabric, to even copy positions of how someone's modeling for a photo shoot. It, it use the same models, right, as us. And I just, you know, it's a constant battle. And I think with the social media nowadays, it, we have to recognize that it is a constant battle that we're going to face, that we, we have to know and, and be okay to not compare and to love us and not worry. Um, have I grown, have we grown as much as others? No, I don't care. Do tons of, did someone call me and ask me how to grow social media? And she's like 150,000 more followers than our business. Yeah, yeah. I feel like calling her back now and saying, Andrea, Tubby Todd, if you guys are familiar with Tubby, Tubby Todd. Andrea, like, you came to me. What are you doing? Like, how, how come you, you're so big now, right? But we have to be okay being who we are. And we have to be okay that we don't look like other people. We just be ourselves and we be true to ourselves. I love this quote. When a beaver builds a dam, he doesn't think about whether it's as great as other dams. He just keeps building, right? Now, now sure, do we need to know about our competitors? Do we need to be able to look? And do we need to be able to, you know, um, know what they're doing and be able to stay up on top of things? Sure, sure. But this is something different. It's like, is my business better than yours? It's, it's, it's a comparison. You see that, feel that difference in just being aware of, of their competitors and, and what, they're, what they're doing. It's, it's something different. So um, that's one of our, our values and one of our um, priorities as a family is to not, not compare and to love us. Another one, always be serving. Um, that's something that we've tried in our family, to be able to serve. Tables have turned, and I know there's a lot of people in this room that have served our family faithfully because we face challenges. And I'm so grateful for that. I always wanted to be the one serving, right? But always serving, it's allowed, as we've done that as a family, it's allowed us to be able to go out as a business and serve. Syrian refugees, we were able to give 1,000 blankets. We, we, we collected blankets and coats as a family, coats from the community, and we were able to donate the blankets to help Syrian refugees that were in need. Um, we've also been able to help through our, uh, come on, our, our blanket there, um, our mud cloth with um, schools in Africa. This is some of our fun things as a family. Um, we first went into to Cambodia, and we, um, and we bought a well. Each of our kids donated money to be able to help family that was out in the rural area um, be able to have a well so that they could have clean water. And when we, ha we had so much fun doing that, Nathan was able to go over there and see this is Nathan here with this family and see our little Peterson family that we, he came home and we decided to create the Kamai blanket. It's a design based on the, the Cambodia traditions. And a portion of all the proceeds go to helping those in need. Um, and so our baby blankets, um, let me, I'm just gonna have to pull these numbers. Um, I believe it's 67, but I just wanna be able to just double check and see. But we've been able to, um, uh, let's see, maybe, um, so we've been able to, um, provide 64 wells to families in rural areas, Serenoni, we haven't been able to provide it, but those like you who support Serenoni and who love Serenoni and buy from Serenoni have been able to provide 64 wells to people in, in the rural countries. And then those are for our extra large and our home throw blankets. And then we have our baby blankets. And our baby blankets have been able to provide 175 safe births. 
So it provides a moped ride for a mother to the hospital, three days in the hospital and a moped ride home. And so 175 babies have been able to be born safely in Cambodia because um, we've had the opportunity to serve because we have customers that, um, like you that, that help us. So um, one of the most important uh, values that we set when we started Serenoni is that our family and our faith will always come first. First before the business. I'm so grateful that this, um, we, we set this out at the beginning because um, and it hasn't been, a, been, been easy to be able to keep that. If we don't establish these priorities first, then the world around us will establish those priorities. It's, it's something that you have to, we have to continually battle with. It seems like everything that comes at you while you're in business is a priority, um, but it can wait. Um, we, um, I'm so grateful for that um, decision that we made. As a result, uh, we were, let's see, sorry, we were in the prime of our life, what I consider the prime of our life. We had hired someone to finally oversee all our fulfillment and um, fulfill right there out of ceremony. So that was taken off our plate. I was working less for the first time, and I was so grateful. It's something that we worked really hard to get me out um, doing less in the business and more with our kids. Um, we had just sent our first daughter off to college, and she was preparing to go on a mission. Um, our youngest, at Nathan's water skiing there, she just entered kindergarten. So we had all of our kids in school, and, um, and our son, just weeks before, um, had won state golf. And I, I wish I should have maybe even brought that video. It was a really fun one. It was a tiebreaker. This school had never, never lost in golf. And Ridgeline um, tied with Crimson Cliff. And it was a, I don't know what they call it, a shootout. I don't know what you call it in golf, but they tied. And so they had one hole, and they chose four people from each team. Anyway, my son made the, the winning shot that secured their state title, and Nathan was the proudest father you've ever seen. That was just weeks, just two weeks before. So um, we were at the time where we could travel. We were freed from the business more so than we'd ever been. And then on November 5th, um, well, let me, let me start a little earlier. Halloween night, Nathan, unfortunately, he was taking the older kids down to another school that was down south to some games. So not unfortunately that he was taking the kids, but unfortunately it wasn't a north or northern school, right? That it was, a, that it was the other school. And so he had taken, <laughs> he had taken um, the oldest kids down. Um, we've had season tickets for the last 17 years I went to Utah State, by the way. So, well, I, I, I actually probably better, so that you guys don't check up on me, I actually graduated from the other one, but I did go to Utah State for a couple of years. So, so sorry. Um, but I had kept the younger kids home it was, and taken them trick-or-treating. And Nathan came, then it was Sunday, the next morning, right? He got home at 2-something in the morning, um, from the game, and then he was involved in, uh, uh, he was serving as a bishop for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and had tithing settlement the whole next day. And he came home late that night, and he's like, I'm tired, like, I'm really tired. I'm like, well, yeah, yeah, you came home at 2 in the morning, your meeting started at 6 in the morning, and it's 7 o'clock at night, you know, of course you're tired. Um, that was a Sunday, and on Wednesday he came home to take a nap. And I knew from work, and I knew when he came home to take a nap, I'm like, okay, like, when, when do we as adults come home from work to take a nap, right? <laughs> yeah, so I said, what is going on, hon? He said, I have a thyroid problem. Something's wrong. I, I'm, 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 I know 100% sure my parents have thyroid problems. 
they both had surgeries. I've got a thyroid problem. Um, on uh, Friday, I took him into Instacare to be able to see what thyroid problem he had. And uh, they did two little tests with his arms and sent us to the emergency room. This is Nathan after receiving the news from the doctor that he had an inch by inch and a half tumor in the middle of his brain stem. We didn't know what that meant. This is us telling our family that night. But, you know, there's treatment, right? There, we have chemo, we have radiation. We spent that whole night, I had this army of people, of Nathan's family and my family, that um, were looking at everything and we knew we had, could get gamma knife radiation and we could get all these things um, to be able to just buzz that tumor right out, right? Um, there are a series of miracle. We, uh, had, we got an appointment with Huntsman on the next Tuesday. So let me remind you, this is Friday. A doctor called me Monday night and said, someone in your neighborhood, um, who I didn't know, by the way, um, showed me your husband's uh, MRI. Do you want to come and meet with us tomorrow? I'm like, oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, like clueless, right? Sure, yeah, we'd love to come and meet with you. I, is it needed? We've got an appointment on the 28th. And he's like, no, why don't you come in? His Nathan, the tumor was blocking Nathan's cerebral spinal fluid from being able to travel throughout his brain. I mean, throughout his body, that cerebral spinal, spinal fluid. And so the doctor said, my friend, you're not leaving tonight. And so um, we went to, um, we were admitted um, from that appointment. And um, he, this is the next morning we decided to um, have a friend come and take quick pictures of our family. The children came down to meet before he went in to um, have brain surgery. And to be able to, sorry, put, have a stint put in. Um, I shouldn't say brain surgery. To have a stint put in. I guess it is brain surgery, huh? Anyway, a stint put in and to be able to um, have a biopsy on that tumor. It was a bittersweet time. We didn't know what was ahead of us. As um, he hugged those kids, he wanted to be home more than anything. We had the surgery and uh, couldn't have tons of kids. We couldn't have kids visit because of the COVID restrictions, but we, we snuck in our little one um, to come and visit him. Um, but uh, after being in there for a week, we were given the diagnosis of glioblastoma, stage four cancer, with no options or treatment for any sort of treatment, no chemo, no radiation. And so um, he was given four weeks to live. And the next few weeks were the most beautiful and sacred weeks that we've experienced as a, we experienced as a family. The kids were able to just snuggle and just be with dad all day, all night. Um, he went from that Friday walking in to the um, Instacare. And by Tuesday, by Sunday, actually, he couldn't walk. That was the change from a Friday to a Sunday. Um, what if we would have not put our family and faith first. Given four weeks to live, Nathan did not have to make any changes. He didn't have regrets. He was able, he spent, he'd spent the time golfing with the kids and playing tennis with the kids. Nathan was one that knew you can ask the kids and no. Five o'clock came and that, he, six o'clock he wanted to be home. Like there was nothing he wanted more than to be home. In fact, um, I've been so grateful as I look back, I remember multiple times saying, Nathan, like, you've been at this golf tournament for five hours. Like, go back to the work. They're gonna, employees are going to just think, like, that we don't like, that we don't work and that we don't, you know, and that we're not committed to the company. And he's like, no, I'm right where I should be. I remember saying to him, don't you think you should go, go visit more widows? And he's like, no, I've done this and this and this to serve in the church. I'm right where I should be. I'm with my kids. I'm with my family. Nathan 
was one that had a perspective that was incredible. He was able to put the most important things, make the most important things, the most important things. And um, I can't say that. I was as good as that. But given four weeks to live, he didn't have to go ask forgiveness from anyone. He didn't have to all of a sudden teach his children about his faith in a God or his belief that we would be together as a family again. Nathan got to love and to just spend time and to be able to tell our kids that he would be able to be there and he would be able to see things that he could never see here on earth, that he would be able to see them serve their missions, that he would be able to see them at college, and that he would be watching and making sure they're making right decisions, and if they ever got in a bad spot, they better think twice because he's watching them, and he better, they better make those good decisions, right? He was able to share all these just beautiful, tender moments with them, sharing and giving them the confidence that they needed and the faith they needed to move forward. So I guess... Um, as I think of what I could leave you, I hope that as you move forward in life, as you, if you're in business, wherever you are, that every so often you will pause and you will ask yourself, what if I was given four weeks to live? Would I, would want, would I want to do anything differently? Would I want to change anything? And that you will be able to remember to put the most important things be have the most important things be the most important things now our important things may be different each of us has to determine that for ourselves for us it was our faith and our family would come first it will be different for each of us but i think the the world around us it will crowd in it teaches us and tells us otherwise and before we even know it we're consumed with something and 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 we're off track of like putting the most important things the most important thing. So I hope as you do this, every so often and you take that pause and you ask yourself, what if I have four weeks to live? I hope you'll remember Nathan. And, you'll, and the, that the lesson that he taught me and that he can hopefully teach each of us, that the most important things are the things that matter. I know if we do that, regardless of what our important things are, if we do that and we make those changes and we make those pivots, I believe that your life will be filled with joy and peace and success as you do that. Could we have grown a business? We probably could have had twice the size of a business if we would not have taken time out for the family. But what would that have profited us? In the end, that perspective, it, it crumbled. Everything crumbled away. The business crumbled away. Our final home that we were digging for, that we had planned for the last eight years, it crumbled away. There were only very few things that were important. Um, so I, I, I promise you that as you put the most important things, make the most important things the most important things, and that you um, define those values and priorities that are most important to you, that, that you will enjoy that, that joy and that, that success and that peace in your life. Thank you so much for uh, being a part of the Serenoni story and for letting me share some of the Serenoni um, story with each of you tonight. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay. Okay. I know this really quick. Oh, it's question and answer. After question and answer, I'm going to just let my, um, two of my kids and maybe some of their friends come up and throw some blankets out. Does that sound good? Okay, question and answer. Yeah. Yep, go ahead. Yeah, well, number one thing I think, um, watch your profit margin, 
right? Of course, and I ho- hopefully we're, that's kind of like a, a said, like that you've already done that, that you've kind of already looked at your profit margin and determined what that is. But I guess um, we were probably a little different maybe than some companies. Um, we, uh, Nathan didn't like a lot of debt. So it may look differently for you than for others. We chose a slow growth because of that situation. You know, but I think, you know, making sure that you have that leadership as you're scaling and making sure that your product doesn't change. You know, so a lot of times when we scale people, it's like the manufacturers, you're, you're, you're having them manufacture and that quality can change. If you can keep that quality consistent, that you're keeping up with those customers, then I think that will allow that continued growth. But if you get bad product, you get bad customers and customer reviews. It doesn't matter how much you've scaled in the end. Yeah. Yeah, no. It, yep. I. I was gonna, I thought you were going to say, what should I do? And I just say, don't start the business, right? No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, he was a, he was a great cheerleader. He let me know I could do anything, right? One of, one of those things. Another thing, every day he asked himself this question, what can I do to serve my wife? And that, he was doing laundry. He was taking a kid and going and playing tennis. He was just, he, he asked that. He, it, wasn't, it wasn't until years later he told me that, that, he, that every day he would ask himself, what can I do to help Emily today? So that's my little tidbit. Yeah, um, oh, lots of things. We're excited. We, um, we're finally going back. Our, our growth, we're hoping um, to grow in our corporate gifting area um, and in our, our wholesale area. Um, and so we are always constantly coming up with new products. We're entering a little bit of the toy market, to be honest, using our fabrics. So that's really fun. Um, also, I just we want to scale a little bit more. Um, right now, we're not going to be going internationally, but that will be our goal in the future. There's just so much opportunity, I think, out for us right now. Um, but I would say just we're, we're going to keep plugging away at the blankets, right? And then just using that same fabric for different products is what our hope is. It's just so we're staying true to that ceremony of being, bringing comfort warmth and connection to to those that we love and those around us so toy market a little bit and then then we're hoping to head and go a little international lately we have one japan um supplier at this point but we haven't really tried to grow internationally yet awesome yeah yeah Yeah, well, um, number one, that was my number one key that I wanted. As soon as we could afford someone, I wanted to be off of social media. And what I mean by that is just like answering the little teeny, being so involved. But social media is one of the greatest tools that we can have, right? Um, it, I've been able to develop relationships with influencers, develop relationships with individuals. I had a lady that came out, her and her husband, there was a doctor, and when they were passing through, they're like, can we come and meet you? This was years ago. 
because we were able to develop those relationships. So I think we, we got to realize, and it's a powerful tool for good and for evil, right? We got to use it. So I think if we can try to get our purpose in that, when I can, when I can wrap my head around, I'm bringing comfort and I'm helping those in need, then that, then it becomes a little more palatable, right? Also, we've been able to, I've been able to develop so many friendships that have helped grow the business. Influencers, individuals with moms. So I think we want to make sure that um, we're using it for that way, you know, in that way that you're building it, you're helping, you know, grow it. Um, but then also, I know there's a whole bunch of courses now. I can't say that I've taken any of those. Um, but I think being genuine to who you are, um, I didn't try to look like anyone else. I tried to just be who I was and and it may be a little easier for me because I was doing it for my, our personal brand rather than when you work with someone else. But I think trying to understand what brand you're representing and how come that's important to you. What's your why for working for them and what good can you do to help them? And then that gives you a little purpose around, around that. Yeah. I think, wait, you know what? Just a second. He's been raising his hand the whole time. I got you and then you're next. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, we have a great return customer rate, so that's a, that's a good question. Um, and nowadays, with Facebook and Instagram, cost, it is so expensive to, to purchase a new customer, right? I would say for us, it boils down to two things, and that is product, the quality, and relationship. So is there a way that you could, if you run your own business, could you infuse yourself in it and like develop that relationship a little bit more? in there and then also with the product can you make it a little more personal so as they get that product they're looking at it and like connecting it to an individual to a per person because then maybe is it a gifting product you know I guess it would just depend kind of like what product it is then then maybe I might be able to give a little more advice but I think for us you know they get it the, the quality is fantastic fantastic they love it it brings comfort to them and then they're able to then share that with other people. When they think of someone that's going through a hard time, that's going through cancer, they're like, oh, this blanket, that's what I cuddle up to. It brings me comfort. So guess what? I'm going to purchase one to be able to give to someone else in need. So maybe trying to make the product a little more personal so they connect with you a little bit more, making sure you're keeping your product or your service at the top quality. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. There's all sorts of sources that you can go to on the internet. Nowadays, back then, there was nothing, right? Nothing. And so I just began searching on the internet. Um, I did locate a factory that did blankets overseas through Alibaba, okay? Um, that's where we first started sourcing their blanket. But the, our whole purpose, we went to, back to our purpose. And our purpose was we wanted to help other families. And so we, we were in a large factory for our first order, and, I, and we knew that we didn't want to do that. We wanted to bring it down and go back to our original purpose, right? So I began start searching, same way, but for an individual that we could work with that could, on a smaller scale. And we're able to find and locate one that then we have women that sew out of their home, so they're able to be, they have a sewing room that, that passes all the inspections and everything, but they're able to be home and then they were able to go to their sewing room. And so we were able to bring it back to things that, that meant the most to us. But it, it all really came off of just searching off of Alibaba. That's, you know, so some of the things you can do is you can look at their check mark. You can look at how many years they're in business, their trade insurance. You know, so those are some of the things that you can do. So, and we have multiple factories and um, all on very, I, I, chose, I chose one factory they, um, that does our muslin they um, had worked for Aiden A, the largest Muslim retailer, and um, their boss had uh, their boss had basically not shipped Aiden A a whole container, seventy thousand dollars worth, and taken the money. 
And so he, um, Aiden Aid came to him and said, hey, we'll, we'll hire you because we know it wasn't you, your boss. We'll hire you um, if you can give us a 70000 He didn't have the ability to do it. But because of the, the, his boss was dishonest, he broke off on his own. And, and that's the reason I chose him, because of his honesty. And, and, how, and, and, and he had two kids. And, and nobody in China had two kids at the time. That, that rule hadn't changed yet. And so um, I, he, was, he was willing to pay more to have that second child. So I wanted to support that family. So I think trying to get to know those suppliers and, and make sure you connect with those suppliers. Yeah. Who, who, go ahead. Oh. <laughs> It's a wild ride. It's, um, it's hard. You can do anything, right? But it, it, it's, it's painful at times, right? It, 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 it's hard, but I think you, if you believe in it, you can do it. And look at the good that you can do to the, you know, throughout the world. You can make a difference in the world, right? Is it going to be hard? Yes. But do you want to make a difference? Can you make a difference in the life of others through, through a product or through whatever services? Um, hard, but so rewarding and so fulfilling. It just takes a lot of good work and a lot of the lessons that probably Mike has taught you on the entrepre- that are keys to the entrepreneur, being a successful entrepreneur. Yeah. So what, what was the last one? What, I mean, personally and leadership-wise? Yeah, um, personally, my faith. That's really what it boils down to. Um, but uh, I guess I, we built this, right? We believed in it. We believed the good. And we have all these incredible team members that I felt like I needed to be there for. You know, did I want to stay in bed for the next month after losing Nathan, I had six kids to raise, a business that I had to go. I, hadn't, I didn't know anything about the financials. I literally, as we are driving, as I'm driving my son down to his seven-on-seven football game down in, in Las Vegas, my kids are watching a movie, and I've got my phone right here. I should have just put AirPods in, but I didn't because I'm not very good at that, that technology, that stuff. I was listening like, how do you read a P&L? How do you read a balance sheet? Like that, that was my life, right? I had to learn everything, but, but I believed in it. And I had this team of people that I had to come up. I, they had families that they were supporting. I couldn't just let Serenoni go. People believed in Serenoni and I needed to be there to, to be that. So I guess pushing through and knowing that like you have something to offer. Like, believe in yourself. Believe in, and then just, and, and then I guess for me, it was a higher source. And, and knowing that I could do something beyond my own personal abilities. If it was left up to me and my own personal abilities, I, I'm out. I'm like, I'm done. I, I couldn't have done it. So I guess it's relying on that higher source and knowing that I can receive that strengthening, enabling power that helped me get through what I needed to get through. And, and I'm still getting through. It feels like it was a few months ago. So, yeah, go ahead. What changes would I have made? <laughs> Sorry, what changes would I have made? Oh, my gosh. I, I would have probably started out realizing, like, Emily, you're running a business, right? Like, like taking, like we got to take this seriously. We got to be able to look and be able to look at profit margins. We've got to be able to see what are all the different costs with things. You know, sometimes we just get excited about being able to create something. And so here I was creating and I was loving the relationships that we were having. I was building. I felt like I was doing so much good with these people in Peru and India. I was like helping them, but I wasn't like watching out like financially. We've got, you got to 
we got to start and make financial decisions right from the beginning. I think I would have probably, um, you know, looked at the business a little bit differently and probably made decisions a little bit differently. I just, I didn't even think about it, to be honest. So, so I mean, it, as dumb as it sounds, I mean, I, I knew, I mean, I, I was getting it. I knew what I was paying for. I knew what duties and customs were. I knew I was trying to sell, but like a neighbor would come or like people would come like, I don't know, the Watersons and the Stevensons, they were like some of my best customers. They come down to my basement and I would be like, oh my gosh, like, so how much is this? Oh, this is 38. But you know what? I'll give it to you today for 18. Like, it's okay. Oh, did you see this bib? You've got a new granddaughter. Oh, here's a bib and here's a burp cloth. Just give it to him. Like, that's how I was treating it, right? It was so fun. It was like, I have all this cute product and I just wanted to give it to everyone, like my kids and everyone else included. So I just, just run it like a business a little bit more than I did. Okay, thanks everyone.